Welcome back to the RX Masterclass. In this video, we'll be reviewing hypertension and its first line therapies. Hypertension, also known as high blood pressure, is a common condition encountered by pharmacists in clinical practice. Understanding the origins of hypertension and its consequences on the body will make it easier to understand how hypertensive medications work. The human circulatory system is a complex network that transports approximately 7,500 liters of blood throughout the body's intricate network of blood vessels. This circulatory process exerts a dynamic force upon the muscular walls of the blood vessels. This is known as blood pressure. This pressure rhythmically rises and falls in tandem with the heartbeat, reaching its peak during systole. When the heart contracts and forcefully propels blood through the arteries, this elevated pressure is referred to as systolic blood pressure, while the heart's relaxation phase is called diastole. In a healthy patient, systolic pressure typically falls within the range of 90 to 120, while diastolic pressure ranges between 60 to 80. This number is lower because it's when the heart is relaxed. Integrity of the circulatory system depend on the properties of the blood itself, the integrity of the blood vessels, and the volume of fluid within them. Thicker blood, as a result of factors such as increased salt intake, demands higher pressure for effective circulation, necessitating more forceful pumping by the heart. Excessive salt intake leads to water retention, elevating blood volume and pressure, which strains the blood vessels. This leads to the release of epinephrine, it constricts blood vessels, increasing resistance to blood flow, while the body's elastic blood vessels can accommodate these fluctuations. Chronic stress on the vessels can precipitate various health complications. A blood pressure reading of 140 over 90 may mean your patient has hypertension. If hypertension goes untreated, it could lead to microscopic tears in the arterial walls. In response, inflamed tissue accumulates around these tears leading to the deposition of substances like fat, cholesterol, and white blood cells. Over time, these deposits for plaques, which is a condition called atherosclerosis. This is dangerous because a plaque rupture may trigger the formation of blood clots, obstructing the flow of oxygen-rich blood and vital nutrients. This may lead to a heart attack, which could damage heart muscle. Medical interventions such as an angioplasty can alleviate clogged blood vessels during angioplasty. A catheter equipped with a deflated balloon is inserted into the obstructed vessel, which in the inflated to widen the passage and if necessary a stent is placed to maintain proper blood flow. Now the blood could do its job and deliver oxygen and other nutrients to the tissues. First line medication recommendations include ACE inhibitors, ARBs, thiazides diuretics, and calcium channel blockers. Starting off with ACE inhibitors, and ARBs which are very similar to each other and should never be given together. ACE inhibitors and ARBs both target the renin angiotensin system. Common side effects include a dry cough, elevated potassium levels, dizziness, fatigue, and teratogenicity. They both effectively lower high blood pressure and provide therapeutic benefits for various disease states. Widely used ACE inhibitors include an allopril, lisinopril, and many more. These effectively lower blood pressure by inhibiting the conversion of angiotensin 1 which ultimately leads to vasodilation in the lowering of blood pressure. Theazide diuretics. Theazide diuretics are a class of medications commonly prescribed to manage conditions such as hypertension and edema. These work in the kidney and achieve their therapeutic effects by blocking the sodium chloride symporter ultimately reducing sodium and chloride reabsorption. Each human kidney contains approximately 1 million nephrons. These nephrons are responsible for the vital functions of filtering blood, regulating electrolyte balance, and producing urine. It consists of the glomerulus, proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, which are where loop diuretics work. The loop of Henle is a critical component of the nephron. The functional unit of the kidney, it consists of descending limb and an ascending limb, both extending from the proximal convoluted tubule to the distal convoluted tubule. This is where theazide diuretics work. They function by obstructing the sodium chloride symporter through binding to the chloride binding site. This results in the hold of sodium and chloride reabsorption from the lumen or filtrate into the epithelial cells, thereby causing an alteration in sodium concentration within the DCT. This ultimately leads to an increase in sodium chloride content in the tubular fluid descending into the collecting duct. With a greater quantity of sodium now present in the filtrate, more sodium can be absorbed into the collecting duct epithelial cells through the sodium channels. This increases sodium content within these epithelial cells, 
and the collecting duct itself, facilitating the exchange of sodium and potassium at these sites. Mediated by the ATPase pump, subsequently, potassium is secreted into the urine through potassium channels. This ongoing process continues, resulting in a potassium loss and ultimately leading to hypokalemia. Thiazides should be used with caution. With patients who have diabetes, renal failure, or high cholesterol, side effects include gout, kidney stones, hyponatremia, and sexual dysfunction. And that wraps up thiazide diuretics. Let's move on to calcium channel blockers. Calcium channel blockers are a class of medications that are primarily used to relax and dilate blood vessels and reduce the workload on the heart. They achieve this by blocking the entry of calcium into the muscle cells of the heart and blood vessels by inhibiting calcium influx. These drugs help lower blood pressure, relieve chest pain, and can be used to manage certain heart rhythm disorders. Calcium channel blockers are valuable in the treatment of conditions like hypertension, angina, and certain types of arrhythmias. They are available in various forms, including short-acting and long-acting formulations, which allow us to tailor treatment to individual patient needs. Calcium channel blockers function by binding to the alpha-1 subunit, which leads to a decrease in calcium influx which inactivates the myosin light chain kinase enzyme. This leads to relaxation of smooth muscle, ultimately lowering blood pressure. And that's all we have for our Naplex Hypertension Review. Thank you so much for watching, please make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. We'll see you next time. Good luck studying!